Look, OLED monitors are a huge jump over the absolute dumpster fire garbage that we had to deal with with LCD for the longest time. But when it comes to HDR, let's face facts. Um, how do I put this? Yes! All right, look, maybe that was a little over the top, but yes, the HDR capabilities on OLED monitors today, it just doesn't quite hold up to TVs or even some mobile devices. And that's exactly what I'm doing today. We're gonna be taking a look at the brand new Asus Glossy W OLED on the left. And then on the right, we're gonna be taking a look at an MSI QD OLED. Although to be honest with you, most of QD OLEDs, I'm gonna be honest, do actually give you very, very similar results. And then in the center, bringing it all together is the tandem OLED panel on the new 11 inch iPad, or maybe it's a year old at this point, who cares? The point is we've got three different OLED technologies, one of which is the tandem OLED iPad, which is often considered to be the true tandem OLED, as this thing can hit up to 1000 nits in a full screen window and up to 1600 nits on highlights, absolutely mogging these two displays in theory on the left and right as the W OLED display on the left can do around 250, maybe 280 nits in 100% window, depending on you know who's using the panel. And then in highlights, potentially upwards of around 1200 nits-ish. And then on the right with the QD OLED, well, these things again will hit similar-ish 100% window values, but actually in terms of a peak brightness, maybe a thousand nits in the peak 1000 mode, which has its trade-off. So on paper, you might be expecting the iPad to absolutely destroy these two OLEDs, but does it? Well, let's start off with the most brutal example, and the answer is absolutely yes, it can. It can make these two look silly and dim by comparison. I mean, I'm looking through this footage that I took of all three of them, and what I'm noticing here is the iPad in the center. Eh, whew, oh boy, is that a whole lot brighter. I mean, it's almost silly to compare them in this really bright HDR content here, especially when a huge portion of the screen is white. It just really, really separates itself from these two OLED monitors on the left and right here. Now, that being said, even though a lot of the footage I've been showing you so far is much, much brighter, let's also face the facts. A lot of HDR content outside of gaming, because yes, gaming can technically, with the use of RTX HDR, get as bright as you want, but outside of gaming, well, a lot of HDR content, it's not so bright. So with that being the case, let's look at some other HDR content here. Here's a video bit on YouTube I have linked in the description below that I love taking a look at. You know, this has a lot of roads, water, nature, that sort of thing. And this one's graded a little bit more conservatively. It's not quite as bright. And with that being the case, well, it doesn't look massively, massively brighter than these two OLED monitors. So what I'm saying is, Maybe you don't need to throw your monitor in the garbage. Maybe, just maybe, you don't need to set it on fire because although the iPad is a lot brighter and although TVs, yes, are a lot brighter, and in fact, I'm trying to show it next to a TV as well, well, it's not always the case. However, there's one other thing that you might wanna consider, and that's the ambient light performance. Take a look here, the W OLED on the left, as well as the iPad in the center, they're doing very, very well. And in fact, because the W OLED on the left is technically a, you know, MLA W OLED, it's not quite the brand new stuff yet, it does have some amount of issues with ambient light. So I would almost say that the iPad even is better in ambient light. It's it's pretty close, but I would say, yeah, maybe the iPad is just straight up a better OLED display. I mean, am I gonna be hooking up a keyboard and mouse to 11 inch screen? No. However, I mean, you compare these two to the QD OLED on the right, and look, let's be honest, QD OLED, it's got better color than W OLED. Let's be honest. But in a condition like this with a lot of light, well, the issues with ambient light, they are clear and present. Wowee, I mean, my God, look at how purple and gray that screen looks in comparison to the two other displays, especially the iPad, which looks nearly perfect even in this bright scene. So, I mean, when you break it down, when you really think about it, fellas, I mean, a QD OLED monitor versus an iPad, 
it's a blowout. The iPad wins in a bright environment, it wins in a dark environment, it wins in HDR impact, it just wins. But it's 11 inches and it's not 240 hertz. And so you might be asking the question, well, it's so much better, but why? Well, I think the reason is it's a different manufacturing process. Now, look, I'm not gonna get super deep into it, but the point is the bottom line is that unfortunately, as great as this is right now, we don't have the capabilities to make something this good on a 32 inch screen. Now, I think a day will come hopefully soon where that is the case, but today, fellas, this is what you got. However, do not lose faith, my brothers, because I do know that we have four layer W OLED coming out next year that should have a significant bump in brightness. I know Samsung, I've, look, I, I don't wanna get into it, but I've heard from some people that Samsung might be looking into also increasing their brightness soon. When is that? I would guess probably 2027, whereas next year LG is gonna be bumping their brightness. So the brightness wars are about to begin, but right now, yes, as great as W OLED and QD OLED is, and they have their own strengths and weaknesses, they're not gonna match up to tandem OLED, and I cannot wait until we have some OLED monitors that, for the love of God, can finally show HDR 1000 graded content without massively dimming or having issues with color. So that could be right around the corner. I can't wait for it. But in the meantime, make sure you get subscribed to see what the best OLED monitors are of today because we don't live in tomorrow, we live in today. So that means that folks, it's a real knife fight out there. You gotta get what you can get. And right now, the best that you can get is QD OLED and glossy W OLED monitors. But what's best for you? I'll let you know. So make sure you get subscribed for everything else display related here on the Display Guy. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, RuPro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And now RuPro is offering a new detachable and upgradable pure fiber cable that sends the same 48 gigabits per second signal through its ultra thin and flexible housing making it easier to route through walls. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out RuPro on Amazon today.